These days, cell phone carriers get a really bad rep and not necessarily for the wrong reasons, with controversies involving not-so-unlimited, unlimited data plans, ever-increasing prices, and ever-decreasing data caps. And on top of trying to figure out which company isn't going to rip you off, you also have to need to consider which one will have the best coverage, obviously. Luckily, there are more options than ever, and today we're going to go over one more that you might not know about, Google. That's right, Google actually offers their own cell service called Google Project Fi, which has some very unique features which may make it very attractive depending on a few things. But it's certainly not for everyone. So let's go over what Google Fi is, how it works, and even if you already know what it is, I'm going to discuss some things I'm sure you'll be surprised to learn. First of all, what is Project Fi all about? Well, what makes it unique is that it isn't so much a cell service in itself, as it is a collection of cell services. With Project Fi, it actually uses three partner cell companies plus Wi-Fi hotspots to choose the network with the best reception at any given time and automatically switches between them. This obviously is unlike any other cell network where you're just connected to that one. And these three networks at the moment are Sprint, T-Mobile, and US Cellular. So at any given time, whichever cell network signal is strongest for your phone, that's the one your phone will use. But you aren't paying for all three of these since all of this is included as part of the Google Project Fi cost. As for the Wi-Fi hotspots it uses, you may have seen my previous video telling you why you should never use open Wi-Fi hotspots. So is this actually a bad thing? Well, Google says that whenever it connects to a trusted hotspot, it actually has a list of trusted ones. It also creates an encrypted connection, so it should be safe. This is basically the same thing I talked about in my other video about VPNs, where it encrypts everything before sending it through the Wi-Fi hotspot, so you don't really have to worry. I think they thought of the issues with the open Wi-Fi hotspots, and that's their solution. As for pricing, I'd say it's okay. Certainly not cheap, and especially if you want more data. The basic service costs $20 a month, and that actually does get you quite a bit, like unlimited domestic and international texting, and unlimited domestic talk, plus the main feature, of course, which is that signal coverage from all the partner networks. But the data is where it gets pretty pricey, and it's not really any better than the other networks, which is really a shame. It's $10 a month for every gigabyte of data, with a minimum of one gigabyte. I don't know what it is with these cell companies and their ridiculous data prices. I mean, come on Google, I thought you'd be better. But again, it's not like any of the other networks are really gonna be any better. However, the good news is that with Project Fi, they will actually refund you the cost of any data that you didn't use in the previous month as a credit for the next. So for example, the past month, I barely used any data since I was just trying it out. So I got $7.43 back out of the $10 I paid for that gigabyte. Also, if you go over your budget, you get charged the same rate of about one cent per megabyte, which is actually kind of weird. It makes me wonder why they make you set a budget at all if they don't stop you from going over and charge you the same rate when you do, and then give you back whatever you don't use. Why even have the option in the first place if it makes no difference? They could just very well just have a pay-as-you-go thing, one cent per gigabyte, leave it at that. I don't know. Anyway, there is another thing you need to know, which is that Project Fi only works on certain devices. You technically have to either have a Nexus 6, Nexus 6P, Nexus 5X, or a Pixel phone. In other words, a phone made by Google. There is a way to get around that though, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Assuming you have one of these devices, they will send you a special Google Fi SIM card, and then you just pop that in, activate it in your phone like any other, and you're off. But here's the question I wanted to know. If it just uses a regular SIM card, why can't I just use it in any other phone? Will it work? And the answer it actually turns out to be yes. You won't see this anywhere on the Project Fi website, but it is possible to use the Project Fi and its SIM card on unsupported phones with some caveats and limitations. In fact, I was able to get Project Fi to work on my Samsung Galaxy S7. Now, before you go and do all this, hold on, because there are several things you need to know. First of all, you will first need to activate the SIM card on a supported Nexus or Pixel device. There doesn't seem to be any way around this. So you will still need one of these supported devices or borrow one for a minute from a friend to get the SIM card working initially. Next, know that many cell phones are network locked unless you specifically bought an unlocked phone. 
For example, my Galaxy S7 was locked to AT&T since that's the carrier I got it from, which means that only AT&T SIM cards would work with it. When you put the Google Fi SIM card into the phone, it will make you type in a special pin to unlock it before it will allow you to use that SIM card. However, the good news is that most carriers allow you to request an unlock code that will let you use that phone on other networks as long as you're not in a contract or something like that. So I filled out the form that AT&T had on their website and a couple days later they sent me the unlock code, it worked, so not a big deal. Now finally, after you activate the SIM card and unlock your phone, everything's good, right? Well, not exactly. See, if you use the Project Fi SIM card in an unsupported device, it will work technically, but you only get to use T-Mobile service. It won't be able to switch to the other partner networks, so you don't really get the main feature of Project Fi, which is using the best one at the time. Still, if you get good T-Mobile coverage where you are, it may actually be cheaper than going through T-Mobile directly, so it might still work depending on how much data you use and how those plans stack up against each other. I would keep in mind though that obviously if you're going to use an unsupported device with Project Fi, you're kind of on your own and I doubt that Google would be willing to help you if you have any issues when that would come up when using it because you're not really following their direction. So just be aware of that. So is Google Fi a good option for self-service? Well, clearly I'm not gonna be able to answer that for you. It's something that you have to come up with yourself and it really depends. Me personally, I think it's cool, but I'm probably gonna stick with my carrier because I'm grandfathered into the unlimited plan. And even if it is a little bit more expensive, my coverage is fine anyways. I don't really have a reason to switch. But if you don't have unlimited data and you have a Nexus or Pixel phone, this is something I would at least look into if you didn't know about it. Speaking generally though, I just wish that these cell companies would cut it out with these ridiculous data plan prices and data caps. Internet companies are doing the same thing where they boast all these high speed internet plans, but you barely get a chance to use it because of the data caps. Cell companies especially though, I mean one gigabyte, two gigabytes, are you kidding me? Even T-Mobile, who claims unlimited data, throttles you if you use too much. At least they don't cut you off. I said it plenty of times before, I think that many cell phone plans are just plain ripoffs. They advertise this woohoo 4G LTE, you can get 100 megabits per second, but we're not gonna tell you that that means if you actually used that full speed, you'd burn through your gigabyte data cap in literally two minutes. Two minutes. This has got to stop. Hopefully, Google might offer an unlimited plan for Google Fi in the future. They haven't announced anything like that. I'm just hoping. It might be that they have a contract with these partner networks that restricts them on what they can charge and what kind of plans they can offer. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, you can't have that competition, can we? Plus, everyone's only gonna be using more and more data as the years go on, now with 4K streaming starting to take off, hard drive space getting cheaper and all that. Cell companies are just gonna cling to their data caps and squeeze customers for every drop and penny. Now they're even starting to talk about so-called 5G, which actually could be amazing if it can do half of what people are claiming. Some articles I've read say it's capable of 10 gigabit to 100 gigabit speeds. I mean, really insane stuff. Super low latency and less congestion. At CES this year, we heard a lot about 5G, especially in the context of smart cars and self-driving cars, which would potentially use this extra speed and bandwidth to network between each other and other cars to drive themselves. If you think about it, it would be awesome for basically any device in your home to have access to extremely high speed internet. We'd see a lot of innovation, I think. I mean, your car, your TV, your smartwatch, whatever. Also, with speeds that high, it could potentially replace your home internet. I mean, imagine that, you don't even need an internet line coming into your house, you just have a wireless 5G hotspot, receives all your internet and you're good. But there's one problem with that, there is no way in hell cable companies are gonna allow that to happen. Many of these cable companies rely on local monopolies where you can only choose the one and you're screwed if you don't like it. And if there was just some way to bypass them, they'd be done for. So this is what I think is gonna happen. Yes, we probably will get 5G in the sense that it'll be possible. And yes, it may even be capable of more than 10 gigabit speeds, but you're not gonna be able to use it because the cell companies 
aren't interested in giving you unlimited data at extremely high speeds. They're interested in making money hand over fist by giving you only a tiny little bit of data and charging you exorbitant fees when you even try to go over it. I can see the advertisements now. New 5G super speed with blazing 10 gigabit cellular, 100 times faster than 4G. And this new plan includes a whopping two gigabytes of data. That's enough to download two million text files. Just $400 a month, buy now. So anyway, I guess that's enough ranting. I know I kind of went off topic, but sometimes I just can't help it. I guess to sum this video up, it might be worth checking out Google Fi. It has some cool, unique features, but it's probably only worth it for a few certain people. I just wanted to let you guys know about it if you didn't know about it already. Of course, though, I would like to know what you guys think either about Project Fi or my little rant at the end. Do you use Project Fi? Do you like it or not? And what do you think about this upcoming 5G thing? You can let us know down in the comments section below. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can click on these, even if you're on a phone. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. It should be worth it. And consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button for notifications, since YouTube probably won't show you the new videos otherwise. So I guess that's about it. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. And as usual, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.